Hello and welcome to Minecraft Beginner's Guide. I'm Brick Waffle, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about what Minecraft is, uh, how you play it, and what you can possibly do with it in the future. Obviously it's impossible to cover everything you could possibly do in Minecraft in one video, and it would be foolish to even try. My goal with this video is to explain some of the basic things like how to get started, how to connect to a multiplayer server, and some of the basic things like how to dig and place blocks, how to craft, and a little bit about survival. So what we're looking at here is the main screen. This is for Minecraft 1.7.9, which is almost the latest version as of the time this video is recorded. Um, and we're going to start with this, but I think most of the core concepts should hold true for a long time. If the game changes drastically, I will just make another video and update that. But what you're looking at here is the main screen when you first log in. A couple of things you might want to do is go to your options. And here you can change your difficulty. Maybe let's make that down to normal. Um, you can change your music and your sound settings, your video settings, any of that sort of thing. I'm not going to spend a lot of time here, but do note that when the game looks different in certain YouTube videos, it's probably because of a resource pack. So I've got the default look here, but you can see I also have some other resource packs installed on the left-hand side. There are plenty of tutorials out there about how to install and use those, but just know that if you want the game to look different, you can install those and use them here. Another feature that came in with 1.7 is the ability for a server and multiplayer to suggest a resource pack for you. So if you're on a server and it says, this server suggests a resource pack, would you like to download and use that? If you click yes, the game is going to look visually somewhat different. Of course, all the shapes will be the same, it's just the textures that change. Uh, also, some of the sound effects can change with the resource pack as well. More importantly, we're going to click on single player here. And as soon as we click create new world, there's several options. You can give your world a name, you can change the game mode, you can go to more world options and put in a seed if you find one of those online, and that's just the number that Minecraft uses to generate terrain. We're going to leave all of this at the default and click create new world, and once your world is created you'll see that you're placed in randomly at what's called the spawn point. So it takes a few seconds to load, and here I am standing on a sheep. That's very exciting. So looking around a little bit you're going to see that you can jump around, move around, kind of the standard stuff you would expect from a game with a first person perspective. You will see this from time to time where there's part of the world that looks like it's missing, there's a hole in it. That's just because the server or your computer hasn't loaded that chunk yet. That's been a, an issue since Minecraft pretty much first came out. One thing that people don't often realize is that you can hit F3 and A and that will force refresh an area and load just the immediate surroundings. So if you do see that and you're trying to walk along and there's just a stubborn spot that won't load, that's a good way to do it. So let's talk a little bit about the user interface. You can see down at the bottom of my screen we have a hot bar with different slots for different items. There's also a hearts bar or a health bar on the upper left corner of that. And the upper right corner is a hunger bar. The hearts bar is pretty straightforward. That determines how much health you have. When you run out of hearts, you die. Hunger, on the other hand, is a little bit different. When you're at full hunger, you'll actually regenerate hearts if you're low. If you're at uh, three hunger or less, you will no longer be able to sprint. And when you reach zero hunger, you will start taking damage, and it will kill you eventually if you don't eat. The other thing to note is by pressing E, you can see your inventory. And here you'll see you get an achievement the first time you do that. You can see a picture of your character here, your armor slots, a small crafting area, and your inventory is this set of 20, or 20 I think it's 27 blocks here, and this is your hotbar. Well, there's two important things to know in Minecraft. These are very core concepts. The first one is... Holding left click on a block will break it, and then using right click will place it back. So let's take down this tree. This is one of the first things you're always going to want to do when you start a new Minecraft game, is get wood. The achievement is appropriately named, and the reason you need this is because wood allows you to make a crafting table, which allows you to make everything else that you need in the game. Now the way crafting works in Minecraft is different from a lot of other games, it's kind of an interesting system. You have to put things in in a specific pattern in your crafting table or the crafting space in your inventory. You might be wondering why do I need a crafting space or crafting table if I have crafting space in my inventory? The reason for that is this crafting space here only gives you four slots, whereas a crafting table gives you nine slots, and some of the patterns simply require that much space. So the first thing you're going to want to do is put some of that wood in your crafting area, and you'll see on the right hand side it will make oak planks. If you take those, take them out, then those four planks in this square pattern makes crafting table. As soon as you put that on your hotbar you'll see it appears in your hand and now you can place your crafting table down wherever you like and you can make much larger recipes. So a couple of things you want to do right away get some wood and make a pattern here with wood in the bottom and the center and that makes sticks. You're, the reason you want that 
is because sticks are the basis for a lot of your tools. We're going to convert one more set of wood into planks. We're going to drag across the top. If you right click and drag, it will put one in each area. If you left click and drag, it will divide it evenly as it can among the spaces you drag across. Those are both really helpful shortcuts. But this pattern here that sort of looks like a pickaxe shape makes a pickaxe. Once we have that, we're going to take our crafting table with us in case we end up having to run. We don't want to lose those resources. And to do that, you just break an item. Now that might be counterintuitive for a lot of folks. It might not seem like you should be able to break things and get them back intact, but that is one of the core concepts of Minecraft. And here's an apple. I will say that with oak trees, there's a chance that apples can drop. That's a good emergency food when you're first starting the game. But the thing we need next is stone. Now, how do you tell which things are which in Minecraft? It's a good question, and I've been asked that several times by friends that are starting out. This looks like stone to a lot of people. Those of you that have played Minecraft for a while will recognize that that is not stone, it's gravel. And the difference is that gravel and sand are the two objects in Minecraft that have gravity applied to them when they're placed as blocks. Which means that if you place a piece of sand on the edge of this tree, it will fall down. Same thing with gravel. Every other block in Minecraft, it'll wherever you place it, it'll stay there. So there's two things you can do to get stone. One is head off to those mountains, which look like some extreme hills from here. Or two, find a little area like this where we can start digging down. Now, be careful when you're finding areas like this. You will take falling damage. But it might be a good idea to go ahead and mine out a little of this and get some cobble. One thing you never, ever, ever do in Minecraft is dig straight down. And here is why you don't do that. If I was digging down and I assumed this went all the way to the bottom because I couldn't see any better and I dig this out, I'm going to take falling damage. Now, that's okay, I survived that, but had there been lava beneath me, I'd be dead and I would have lost all of my items. That's not something you want to be doing, especially in your first couple of minutes of Minecraft. But what you do need to get is eight stone, and it's cobblestone once it's mined. And the reason you need that is so that you can make a furnace, so that you can make some of the other items in the game. Now, between a crafting table and a furnace, you can make almost everything you need. And this is an extremely lucky find, because what we have here is iron. Iron is one of the materials you need for much um, much better gear in terms of tools, armor, weapons, and whatnot. And you'll see there's a couple of things to note about iron blocks. One, they take a lot longer to mine. And two, if you break them with a wooden pick like I just did, you don't get anything. That introduces this whole concept in Minecraft of having better tools giving you better materials. So one of the things you need in order to get iron is a stone pick. So let me show you how to do that real quickly. Put that crafting table down get my two sticks here and the same pattern as the other pick only this time we're using stone instead of planks that makes a stone pickaxe so let's pick up this iron and wow there's quite a bit of it here that's very handy we'll get all of that and you'll note that iron is iron ore so if I tried to make a pick with this it won't let me you have to refine your iron ore before you can do anything with it. You'll see that that recipe doesn't produce anything at all. So instead what we need to do is make ourselves a furnace. And a furnace is this pattern in stone. If you do the same pattern in wood, you'll get a chest instead, and that's very helpful for storing your items. One thing that you don't want to end up doing, by the way, is spending a lot of time in an unexplored cave that's very dark like this, because monsters can spawn not just at nighttime, but anytime it's sufficiently dark in an area. So we're going to actually take this back, and I'll show you how to get out of a pit like this. If you find yourself down here where there's not an easy way out, you want to make a little staircase and make your way up. Carve yourself a way out. And that's pretty common in Minecraft. You'll find that that happens quite a bit. You don't necessarily have to remove all this dirt, but it does make it easier to see from the surface. So if you find that you want to come back here later, you like how much iron we've already found right on the surface, and you want to find more, it can sometimes be easier to spot your staircase down than having to look in every single hole you cross when you're wandering through the terrain. And just like that, we're out. Now, see that I've also picked up several things here. I've got a couple of saplings, and I've got some seeds. The saplings come from the tree leaves. When you take down a tree and the leaves decay, they'll drop sometimes apples, usually saplings, and you can plant those to regrow new trees. And that takes time and light. Um, and if you have torches you can actually, and enough space, you can actually grow trees underground. But that's another topic for a different video. The other thing that I got was seeds, and this you get from taking out grass. There's a chance that seeds will appear when you break grass. And those you can use to plant wheat. We'll talk about farming in a little bit. So for now, important things to note is you can look and see where the sun is and see that it's moving. 
A Minecraft day is 10 minutes long, and a night is 10 minutes long. When that sun goes down, everything on the surface suddenly becomes as dark as a cave and monsters can start spawning. So before that happens, we want to make some torches. So just like before, we need a crafting table, but here we also need some kind of fuel for our torches. Now had I been fortunate enough to find coal, I can use that coal directly. If I'm not that fortunate, I can cook items in a furnace. As long as I'm using wood, I can cook regular wood into charcoal. It's not the most efficient use of resources, but it does work. And you should see that I'll get three pieces of charcoal out of this. Now you may see that I'm running out of fuel and I can't quite combine that. That's unfortunate. Coal is very efficient. It burns for eight items. Regular wooden items generally burn for about one and a half ticks. Um, and that's not really enough to make much, but that coal, that piece of charcoal, when combined with one stick, is enough to make four torches. That's sufficient for now, so let's go on and I'll show you what else you need to make. Break this again. You'll see that that furnace broke a lot more quickly than the crafting table did, and that's because in Minecraft the different tools you use determine how effective you are. So let's make some more planks here, and let me actually put that crafting table back down. Another important tool you'll need to make is an axe. And that axe, even though it can be made out of wood, makes that crafting table break a lot more quickly. Now obviously the quality of the tool also helps, so if I have a stone axe it breaks much more quickly than a wooden axe, and the quality of tools goes from wood to stone to gold and iron. Gold is technically a little bit better than iron, but it has a lot less durability, so it's not generally a good idea to make your tools out of gold or your armor. And then diamond is the best things you can make. So we can also make some other tools. I'm going to show you a couple of these things. Another important thing, since night is on its way, is we can make a sword, and I'm going to make that out of stone. So that's a stick in the bottom, and two of your sword material right above that. You can also make a shovel, and that's used for clearing dirt, or sand, or gravel, other loose items. And then when we get ready to do farming, you can actually make a hoe for tilling ground. And now that I've made an axe, I should actually use it. You'll see that it's getting dark fairly quickly, so one thing we want to do is find a safe space to hole up. The minimum that you need is basically anywhere that's a two tall by one deep hole so that you can not suffocate in the, in the terrain. Um, beyond that, everything is a luxury. So one thing that's very common for people to do in Minecraft is to just dig a little hole in the ground and use that as their shelter for the first night. And you can simply just put your dirt back over this hole Put that torch down here, put dirt back, and then wait for daytime. As long as you're in a lit area like this, it's perfectly safe. Now obviously that's pretty boring, and you probably don't want to wait. see me wait for 10 minutes, so I'm going to pause this video and I'll be right back when it's daytime. Alright, it's not quite daytime yet, but I wanted to go over a couple of more things while we're here. One thing is some keyboard shortcuts you can use if that's the kind of thing you like to do. When you have items in your inventory and you want to place them into your hotbar, I can shift click and it will go into your container. You can shift click again and they'll go in from left to right down in your hotbar. You can also press a number key. So for example, if I press six, that's going to go into the sixth slot. You can take that back out. If you right click a stack of items, you'll take half of them. If you have some items and you right click, you'll place one of them and you can stack them up like that. If you drag right click, you'll place one in each spot you cover. You can shift click again to stack items up, and if you left click it will spread them out. I mentioned that earlier with crafting, but you can also do that in inventory as well. So you may also not want to spend 10 minutes just staring at a torch when you're in your first night of Minecraft. So what a lot of people end up doing is they start digging and mining, because it is Minecraft. They want to start looking for materials, and this is a good way to do that. As long as you have enough torches to keep your area lit, it's perfectly safe to do this at nighttime. And look at that, I found more iron. So one of the other, th and some coal, this is a fantastic example. This is a good first day in Minecraft. You don't always find coal and iron this quickly in every direction you look. Um, iron is fairly abundant. When you start talking about things like diamonds, that is going to be a lot harder to come by. But this coal, combined with the little bit of wood we have remaining, will allow us to make a lot more torches. It'll also allow us to start cooking food. Now, things like apples, you don't have to cook. That's great. It's really easy. It also doesn't provide a lot of hunger back when you eat it. One of the things that you do have to worry about is not just how many little turkey leg icons you get back when you eat, but your satiety or how sated you are when you're, when you're finished eating a food. 
That's kind of a fancy word for basically saying how long is it going to be before you're hungry again. Now, if you eat apples, you're going to be hungry again pretty quickly. If you eat steak, for example, you're not going to be hungry again for a while. Now, I don't know if you can hear this or not, but there's a kind of a splatting sound nearby. And what that means is there's a slime nearby me. Monsters in the game make different sounds when they're walking by. Zombies will, of course, moan. Skeleton, and actually you can he you can see the slime dripping above me. There's a slime right out there. Slimes are actually relatively rare in Minecraft, unless you are in the swamp, which I am now. In which case, I should be able to see him. Where did he go? Now, slimes are not useful for anything other than the slime balls that they drop. When, you, when they drop a slime ball, and here come some other monsters. I wasn't going to talk about that yet, but maybe I will. Slime balls can be used right now to build sticky pistons for engineering. I'm not going to talk much more about that other than you can. Um, and here's a skeleton. You can also make slime blocks in the next, expand, er, the next patch. And those slime blocks allow you to bounce. Oop, and that's a creeper. And that's a zombie. So you can see that being out at nighttime is fairly dangerous, even with a sword. Since I have no armor, um, anything I get hit by, like you can see that I got hit a little bit by that explosion, that did quite a bit of damage. Creepers, when they get near you, will explode, as you just saw. Zombies will just bite and claw at you. Skeletons will shoot you with arrows. And creepers will explode when they're nearby, dealing damage to you and to the terrain. Now, one thing I do want to mention is death and dying, but I don't want to mention that quite yet, so let's see if I can finish killing these. And get back in my nice little safe hidey hole after I collect this item these items. Now you see those little green orbs there? Those are experience orbs and that's what you get when monsters die. You can see the little number three here on my right above my hotbar and what that is is my level. Now unlike a lot of games your level doesn't determine how good you are at anything. Sorry about that. Instead your level only is used for enchanting items. When you enchant an item you spend your levels to get the enchantment. Now, that's not a big deal since levels don't do anything else other than that, so really, the longer you survive, the better your enchants can be. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things that we've got. Now, we have coal, which is fantastic. We have slime balls, which aren't terribly useful yet. Some dirt, some bones, and some wood. We also have rotten flesh from zombies. Now, you can, in fact, eat rotten flesh. It's generally not a good idea, though, because when you do you're going to get this hunger effect. You see how all that turned green on my hunger bar, and I got these little green swirlies? And I have this hunger debuff for several seconds here. What that means is that while I did gain hunger back from eating it, I'm going to lose hunger rapidly over that same time period. It's okay to eat rotten flesh in some cases, and, and that sounds kind of disgusting, I know, but what happens is when you are full on hunger, your hearts will start to regenerate, as you can see over here on the left. So in a pinch... It's okay to do that if you just need the regen, you don't have any better food, but know that you are going to be hungry again afterwards, so that's only a temporary fix. So in this case, I'm going to eat up all this rotten flesh until my hearts are full, keep myself topped off on hunger so that I at least get my health back, and then we'll move on. So I mentioned the furnace earlier. What you can actually do with the furnace is put fuel in the bottom, and now that we actually have coal, we can do that and you can cook various items. So one of the things that's very important to know is you have to turn iron ore into iron ingots by smelting it. You do that in a furnace the same way you would cook raw pork into pork chops or raw beef into steak. If there's anything you're going to change with heat, you can do in a furnace. Uh, with the exception of brewing, which I'm not going to cover in this video. Just know, and actually there's a lot of monsters out there, let me turn my sound down a little bit. Know that there are ways you can brew and enchant. And by brewing, I mean potions, not alcohol. They're still fairly loud. Turn that down again. Now you can see that my hunger has dropped a little bit after eating all that rotten flesh, but the hunger debuff has gone away, so now I'm going to eat this apple and get most of that hunger back, and I should be good again for the rest of this evening. So what do you do with iron? Well, I'm going to wait till I get a little bit more of it, and in the short term I'm going to show you what else we can do with some of the items we have here. With bones, you can turn them into bone meal. And that helps you grow crops faster. I know we haven't talked about crops yet, but just know that's one of the primary things you can do with bones. You can also use bone meal as a white dye. So if you're making things like leather armor, 
or wool that can be dyed. You can use bone meal to make that a, a white color. And you can't make armor out of wood or stone. You have to make armor out of iron. But you can also make iron tools, iron weapons, and things like buckets and minecarts out of iron. So how do you know what to do first? Well, that depends on your playstyle. There really is no right or wrong answer to almost anything in Minecraft. Although, that rule about not digging straight down or straight up is a very important one. It will get you killed if you don't follow it. But if you decide you would rather have a full set of iron armor first, great, that's perfectly fine. If you'd rather have all your iron tools and no armor because you're great with a sword, that's also fine. You can see that while it was fairly dangerous up there, I was able to survive that brief encounter with no armor and a stone sword, although I was only at three hearts left. Probably not the best choice, but it is a valid choice. Anybody can do whatever they want in Minecraft. They just have to know what the consequences might be. So one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a chest to hold some of our items. We're going to do that with these planks. And when I put this chest down, I'll be able to put anything I want to keep safe in there. Now it doesn't have to be valuable stuff, but in this case it's going to be because I'm going to go show you what happens when you get killed. So you can see that I've got all that iron. Put that in the chest as well. So let's punch our way out of this dirt. And there's a big old slime up there. Now slimes will do damage when you, when you touch them. That's their form of attack. And when they die, they'll split into smaller pieces. And actually this creeper is going to kill me here. Oh, not quite. And only the smallest slimes will drop slime balls when you kill them. Important things to note about other monsters, zombies and skeletons take damage from sunlight, unless they either have a helmet, have something over their head, or are in oops, water. If they're in water, they're going to be set on fire and instantly put out. Let me go ahead and die here. Hello, skeleton. I'm foolish and adventuring with no items or armor. So when you die, you'll see that you get a score. That's more or less irrelevant. The longer you live, the better your score is going to be. You'll also see that those experience orbs I gained are floating around my head, and I have two options. I can quit and go back to the title screen, or I can respawn. Now when I respawn, we're going to be at that same area we just started in. And if you're on a server, you're going to be in the server spawn area. In a single player world, you'll be wherever the uh, default server spawn, or you know, the default spawn for your single player world is. If you have slept in a bed, you'll respawn in your bed. So that's a very important thing. I know I haven't talked about how to make beds yet, but if I go back to where I died, which I believe is over this way, maybe not. I know those hills were in the distance. There we go. That's where the creeper exploded. You'll see that the things I was holding are on the ground, along with some of the experience I had earned. So you can always go back and get your stuff. And I've got one level now instead of three. So it's not a huge deal that I died. It's not a big setback. It can be very frustrating if you lose your items. And the way that can happen is if a creeper explodes and there's items on the ground, it will destroy those items. So if you're being chased by several creepers and one of them kills you and the other one blows up a split second later, it can destroy all of your items. Um, if you fall into fire or lava and die and your items then fall into the fire or lava, the items will be destroyed. And that's why these chests are pretty handy things here. So let's get back some of our equipment. And we're going to start using that iron that we got earlier. So what can you do with iron? Well... You can combine it with sticks, which I'll show you again here, to make iron versions of your tools. So a lot of people like to make an iron sword fairly early. That's pretty, pretty good defense against monsters. You can also make iron armor, and that's the pattern for a chest plate, everything but that top block. You can also make iron pants by making kind of a pants shape. You can make a helmet by making a sort of helmet shape there. And you can make boots by making that sort of boot shape. So this isn't always true, but especially in armor, it looks a lot like the icon, the pattern for making it. That's pretty handy to know. The other thing that's very important is being able to make buckets, and that allows you to move things like water or lava. Shears are also fairly helpful because that lets you get wool from a sheep without having to kill it. And in this case, I have just enough left over that I can make a helmet and have one to spare. So, like I said, there's no right or wrong answer. You can do any of those things perfectly fine. But the next thing I want to do is I want to start getting wool to make a bed so that I can choose where I spawn if I die again. So in order to do that, we need to find some sheep. But since there are cows here, 
Let's go ahead and kill them as well. And cows will drop meat, and sometimes they will also drop leather. Now you can combine, you can eat mushrooms if you combine them with red and brown mushrooms and a wooden bowl. That's okay food. It's not going to restore a lot of health, and it's not going to make you very sated. And you'll see that I also get leather from cows from time to time, and you can use that to make leather armor. But since we're in a swamp and we do have mushrooms, we could use that for food. Now the pattern for leather armor is exactly the same as the pattern for the um, iron armor that I showed you a minute ago. It just uses the other material. And like a lot of things in the game, you can pick up flowers if you like to decorate your house. With vines, though, you do need to use those shears that, you, that I made earlier. So when you get these with shears, and it works for the leaf blocks as well, you can get these as decorated, decoration items. Now, they don't really serve any purpose other than decoration. However, um, because you can climb on vines when they're next to a solid object, you can't do it if they're just hanging out here, you can use these as kind of a poor man's ladder because they will keep growing down as long as there's space below them. So if you have a very tall mine shaft, you can put some vines in there and grow your ladder down naturally. A couple of things to, to know about that. If you accidentally chop off the top of your vines, they will all be destroyed. If you're climbing down your mine shaft and a creeper attacks and blows up at the top, you could find yourself falling very quickly to your death. So it's not ideal, but in a pinch, they're good and they're very cheap. So over here we see some sheep, and it is not unusual in Minecraft to see sheep or other, oops, other animals in trees, and you want to right click with your shears to get the wool, rather than left clicking. Left clicking will kill them. Now they don't drop any kind of meat, no mutton comes from sheeps in Minecraft, but you also get twice as much wool by shearing as you do from killing them. If you are in a pinch, you don't have shears though, and you kill a sheep, you'll get one wool block, so it's better than nothing. Now that's ten wool, that's actually plenty for right now. You need three wool and three wood to make a bed, and I didn't bring my axe with me, that was unfortunate. So let's get a little bit more wood here. And you can use the wrong tool, it's just less efficient and it's going to put more durability wear on your tool. Alright, let's head back, see if we can find that cave. A couple of important things about finding your way back and forth in Minecraft. One is, if you have a reference point like those mountains out there, it becomes fairly easy to navigate visually. If you're in a desert, or you're in those extreme hills, and you're trying to remember exactly where you were, it can be a little challenging to find your way back. So if you hit F3, you'll see that you have some coordinates. Now, the top left corner is mostly about the way the game is running. That's how many frames per second you're getting, how many chunk updates you're getting. There's a lot of other information up there that doesn't really matter for the most part. That second part of information in the bottom left has your X, Y, Z, and F coordinates. X, Y, and Z are your location in the world, so you'll see that if you move in one direction, I'm moving along the X axis now, that number changes. If I move in the other direction, that's the Z axis. And Y is my height. F is my facing, so you can see that I'm facing south, or facing west, or facing north. You can also use the sun as a guide if you can watch it moving. You can see there we go, setting in the west. You can also use that to determine that it is afternoon and not morning, which is also helpful. But if you remember the coordinates for your little hovel, so for example here the entrance is at 219, 63, 259, you always know what direction to head to come back to your home. So have a piece of scratch paper, write that down, that's perfectly fine. Um, it's a very helpful way to get back to where you're going. So let me put some uh, more torches down because I think it's a little too dark in here. If you forget to put torches down and you're in one of these little natural caves or something you've dug out, monsters can spawn in here and kill you. That would ruin your whole day. So making a bed, three planks, three wood, now we have a bed. Now bed does take up two blocks by one block, but important things to note here, if I, uh, let's see, I show the access to the sky again. Since it's daytime now, it'll say you can only sleep at night. If it's nighttime and you sleep in a bed, not only will it set your spawn point, it will actually advance the game automatically to day. In multiplayer, that only works if everyone that's currently online is also sleeping, but in single player, that's a very handy thing to do. So now that we have a bunch of beef, we're going to cook that up in our furnace to give ourselves some better food. And we have six leather, which is enough to make a pair of leather boots. So put those on. Now I mentioned earlier that you could dye things with bone meal. Oops. 
Let me get that bone meal out of my chest. If we put the leather here and the bone meal, you'll see that it makes white leather boots. And if I put those on, you see I have little white boots here. That's pretty helpful. Um, if you like to have dyed armor, because it looks neat, that's great. But leather armor is not the best protection. It's more of an emergency fix than anything else. So we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on that. What we are going to cover now is farming. And that's because farming is a very easy way. Oh, hey, it's almost nighttime. Let's go ahead and show you that bed trick real quick. You'll see that the screen gets a little bit more dim. And then it pops you out of the bed, and it's daytime again. Very, very helpful. Now if I die, I'll also respawn in my little hovel. So farming. Farming requires a couple of things. It requires tilled soil, which you get from tilling soil with a hoe. And that has to be within four blocks of water source or it will dry out. So if I till this area right here, perfectly fine. It's within four of that block. And in a swamp, it's going to be pretty easy to find. Almost everything is going to be within four of a block. But for example, this is one, two, three, four, five away. So that works for now, but it will dry out. Actually, one, two, three, nope, it's too close to that diagonal area. But I can show you something else. If you jump on tilled soil and land right on it, if I can do that, it turns back into normal dirt. So if you're jumping around and harvesting things and you happen to land on your tilled soil, that will ruin it. If there's crops planted there, it will break. Um, this looks like it's far enough. If I just tap that one, you'll see that in a few seconds that will turn back to regular dirt. The difference here, this is lightly hydrated soil. This is heavily hydrated soil. It just takes time for that to happen. So if we wait long enough, that will become heavily hydrated as well. Um, and this one up here, like I said, will eventually become regular soil again. It does take some time. There we go, that's heavily hydrated. This is the best for growing crops. And right now, all we have is some seeds, which I didn't bring with me. And seeds make wheat. There are other crops in the game like carrots, potatoes, pumpkins, melons. They all basically function the same way. You need to plant the seeds in some hydrated soil and they will grow. Now, you remember I mentioned the other thing you can do with bone meal is make crops grow faster by right clicking it. That's usually what most people do so that they can harvest that immediately and you'll see that when I get that back, I get wheat and more seeds. So doing this setup, you can farm as much food as you want. It just takes time to grow. Uh, the actual amount of time it takes varies depending on your configuration. This is actually a really bad idea to plant them in a square like this. The way that crops growing works is it checks for crops that are adjacent to it in one direction. That's perfectly fine. But if there's crops adjacent to it of the same type in two directions, it's going to slow its growth. So if this was wheat and this was carrots, that would be ideal. But this is actually a little bit slow. What I should have done is actually gone this way with it. I'll go ahead and take those back. And that makes those grow faster. Uh, since I've got two more, I'll go ahead and do this as well. And plant ourselves a nice little row of wheat. There it goes. Um, carrots and potatoes can be dropped from zombies. They can also be taken from uh, NPC villagers. You can sometimes see the farms out there in the wild, and you can just take their carrots and potatoes and plant them in your area. Uh, pumpkins will grow randomly in forests and extreme hills, and melons will grow randomly in jungles. Now, melons and pumpkins do work a little bit differently. If you plant the seed here, the melon or pumpkin is going to pick a random block adjacent to that one in which to put the actual melon or pumpkin object. And the stem will stay there, and when you harvest the melon, it'll just keep growing another one over time. The melons and pumpkins are not great food. Melons can be turned into melon slices, which are, can be eaten directly for a little bit of health. Pumpkins have to be made into pumpkin pie, but you can also wear a pumpkin on your head as a helmet. It doesn't really offer any protection but it does keep Endermen from seeing you. And I know I haven't mentioned Endermen before. Um, if you've ever seen the YouTube things about Slenderman, it's supposed to be based on that. They're kind of scary guys, tall, skinny, um, and they teleport near you when they get hit. They'll teleport away, and then they'll try and teleport behind you and attack you again. They're kind of scary. Generally, they are non-aggressive unless you look directly at them. So we'll, leave, we'll ignore that for now. We're not going to talk much more about that. While, these, while this wheat is growing, I'm going to come back down here and check and see if our steak is done looks like it is. We're going to take that coal and we're going to make a few more torches. Oops. And we are actually doing pretty well. So you can see now we've got plenty of food, we have some tools, we've got some crops here. Um, I need three wheat to actually make bread and I'll talk about that a little bit more. 
one of the questions that a lot of people ask is, well, how do I know how to make all of this stuff? It seems like you just have all these patterns memorized. I don't know where to find all that stuff. I don't know everything yet. The Minecraft Wiki is fantastic. I'll put the link to that in the description. There's a complete crafting list that gives you every recipe in the game. It's very, very helpful. Um, the other thing that to note is, what if you're not in an area that has water like this swamp and you want to grow crops? What if you're in a desert? Well, that's what these buckets are for. If you take a little bit of water out of here, you can then place it down somewhere else. And I'm going to do something really silly and place it near my home. Water will spread out. I already have a video explaining how water and lava spread works. So if you're more interested in that, check that out. I'll put a link to that here in this video. You can also click that water source again to pick that up. That's very helpful if you're trying to make crops somewhere else where you don't have access to water. It's also very helpful if you do happen to find yourself near lava and you step into it for a second and get set on fire. You can put it down and pick it back up and put yourself out. So what other kinds of monsters are there in the game? We've already seen zombies, skeletons, creepers, and slimes. There's also witches, which will throw potions at you. Um, those can be very, very dangerous to fight because the poison potions won't kill you, but if you're at one heart or a half a heart, almost anything else will. A stray arrow from a skeleton and that sort of thing. There are also spiders that we haven't seen any of yet, which is kind of surprising. If spiders are spawned in high light levels, they're neutral, meaning they won't attack you unless you attack them. If they're spawned at night, though, they're aggressive no matter what the light then becomes. So if you're down here in your cave overnight, a spider spawns up there, and then it's daytime when you come back out, that spider will still be aggressive, it will still attack you. Spiders drop string, which you can use to make bows, which we haven't talked about yet. Um, and you can also use this string to make fishing rods, that sort of thing. Again, I would point you to the wiki to see what kind of things you can make with different items, what the recipes for those items are, and what drops those things. Um, I like collecting slimes. It's kind of rare to see them. They only spawn in swamps at night, so this guy spawned in our last night, or they can also spawn in a slime spawning chunk, and there's whole sections of tutorials on YouTube and other parts of the web devoted on how to find slimes when you get into making sticky pistons and slime blocks. So for now, consider this a stroke of good luck for me, and we'll move on. There's also silverfish, and those only occur in dungeon areas. And now dungeons are a little bit unusual. There's three strongholds in the, each game world. They're generally spread out equidistant from the spawn point of the world when it's first created. When you get down to the bottom of those, some of the blocks you mine in those dungeons will hatch silverfish. And those are just little um, kind of rat-like creatures that will chase you and attack you. They're not very dangerous by themselves, but when you attack a silverfish, all the silverfish in the nearby blocks can also come out and start attacking you, and you can get overwhelmed pretty quickly if you're not careful. When you're in a dungeon or a stronghold, you can also go to another dimension called the End. I'm not going to get into that in this video other than to say that's where one of the bosses in Minecraft is, so you can fight the Ender Dragon there and get some exciting things. It's one of the two bosses you can fight in the game. The other one is the Wither, and that boss is constructed based on some items you can get in the Nether, which is another area that you can get to in Minecraft. So getting to the Nether is a little bit tricky. There are a couple of ways you can do that early on in the game. It's generally not a good idea because it can be a very dangerous place. Almost everything there will try to kill you and be very successful at it, with the exception of Zombie Pigmen. And the only thing I'm going to mention about Zombie Pigmen is they have social aggressiveness. So if you attack one Zombie Pigmen, Every other zombie pigman within 32 blocks will immediately turn aggressive and start heading right towards you. That can be pretty dangerous very quickly because they can also spawn with gold armor and weapons. And sometimes they can drop that, usually mostly broken, but it can be okay if you, you know, need an item in a pinch. Generally, though, ignore the zombie pigmen and they'll ignore you. Now, as far as getting to the nether, you need a portal for that. If you're playing on a multiplayer server, other people will use the nether to get from places, uh, from point A to point B, a little quicker because... Every block you move in the nether is eight blocks in the overworld. So for example, if I'm here at 219 by 255 in the overworld, then I move to 256, one block. If I'm in the nether and I move that same block from 219 to 256, I'll actually be moving eight blocks further in the overworld. And that's a little bit strange, but it's basically, if you're at zero, zero in the overworld and you go to the nether, you'll be at zero, zero in the nether. If you then go to one, one in the nether, you'll be at eight, eight in the overworld. So it's a very quick way to get across large distances in the map. So a lot of people will actually use that. They'll put a portal down in one place, travel through the nether ways, and put a portal down to come out somewhere else. Now, a portal requires obsidian, which requires diamond tools, and it's made from water and lava interacting. It can also sometimes be found naturally down in very deep areas. Um, 
when you have that obsidian, you can make a frame shape, light it on fire with flint and steel, which I haven't also talked about, and then that'll give you a portal that you can go through into the nether. Other things to know, if you have enough iron that you have iron blocks, you can actually make yourself a little guardian, an iron golem, and that's going to be a pattern of blocks and a T-shape, and I'm going to do this out of dirt just so you can see what I mean by that. If you make this pattern out of iron blocks, and then put a pumpkin on the top of it, it will turn into an iron golem that will defend the area from hostile monsters. You can do the same thing out of snow and a pumpkin to get a snowman who will throw snowballs at monsters. Generally, that doesn't do much damage or any damage to them. It does, however, push them back a little bit, so it can be helpful to keep your home safe from things like creepers that get too close. Now, I will mention that iron golems do not attack creepers, so that's not a defense, but if you find and tame a cat, again, not something I'm going to talk about in this video, creepers are afraid of cats and they will stay away from them. So that's why you'll sometimes see people that have cats at their house, they'll just tell the cat to sit in an area near the front, and that way creepers won't be right outside their front door when they come out in the morning. That can ruin your day pretty quick. If you gear up for an expedition, you open your door and there's a bunch of creepers standing there waiting for you. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is connecting to multiplayer because this game is great, but it's a lot more fun with friends. So there's a couple of ways you can do that. One, if you're on your network and you've got a bunch of people on your, like your home network there, you can simply click open to LAN after hitting escape and going to the game menu. When I do that, you can set the settings for other players and then start LAN world. And now it will tell you the port. So all you have to do is tell the people in your, in your, on the same router as you what your IP address and your port number are, and they can join your server play with you. They'll jump right into this game in progress, and you can blo both play together. If you have a server that someone else has set up, and it's a hosted server outside of your local network, you're going to need to know the IP address for that or the domain name. So if I go back to the title and I click multiplayer, you'll see that I have my Wolf Raven Survival here. And I've also got another server that doesn't appear to be online right now. This is from Zoomavoid and DocM. This is the Respawn Network server. And all you have to do is click Add Server, give it a name, give it a server address, which is usually going to be an IP address. I'm sure if you don't know what that is, there are plenty of videos on that for, for online for you to look up. And then a colon, and then the port number. So I doubt this is a, a real Minecraft server. If I had done that, it would say can't, it would not have this can't resolve host name. You can also direct connect to a specific address. This is local host on a specific port. If you don't want to type that out, you can also just type the word local host. And if there were anything, any servers running on the same computer, that would allow you to join it. Generally, you can see in the multiplayer whether the server is online. For example, this one's not online. This one is. There's currently no one logged into the server. And you can see your ping and your connection to that server. So I have a very strong connection to this, which is the normal server that I play on. And if I wanted to click on one of those, I can just double click it, join it. And now I'm in the, the, the normal Brick Waffle Wolf Raven Survival server in the town hall with the default resource pack. When you're done, again, just disconnect. And it takes you back to the main screen. This Minecraft Realms is something new that Mojang has added. It's a feature where you can start up servers hosted by Mojang for the game. They're basic vanilla servers with no mods, which I'm not really going to talk about much more in this video. Uh, but mods are things that allow you to, to modify the game in some way. A lot of servers run something called Bucket, which allows them to change some of the rules of the world. You can do things like create teleports, you can set up an economy that has money and lets people trade and barter, set up signs to sell their items, all sorts of things. Um, almost anything you can imagine can be done with a mod or a plugin, and there are servers that have all sorts of those things added. Even new biomes, new creatures, all that sort of stuff. That's a very advanced topic for some of those things. I'm not going to talk about that in this video, but just know that they exist. And if you're going to go join a server where your friends are playing and they have mods, you're going to want to ask them what those things do. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you did, please do leave a like or give it a favorite. If you want to share this with somebody else, that would be great. If you want to specific tutorials on follow-up topics like horses or more advanced farming, um, tutorials about how to get to the nether and what to do when you get there, any of those sorts of things, please feel free to ask. Um, I really do appreciate all your feedback. I hope this was helpful and uh, enjoy your Minecraft. I've been Brick Waffle. Thank you for watching.